Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining the problem on epicyclic gear train. So, let's get started. Now, here is the question in front of us. Whatever is given here, I will write that in the form of data. It is given. In an epicyclic gear train as shown in figure, here the diagram is given. Driving wheel A, here is wheel A or the gear A, has 14 teeth. The type of gear train number of teeth on wheel A is 14, then and fixed annular C has 100 teeth. So, here is annular C also called as the internal gear having 100 teeth. Next, the number of teeth on wheels E and D. E again here also there is an annular, it is having teeth 96 and D is having teeth as 40 respectively. So number of teeth on E is 96, on D it is 40. Then the wheel A rotates at 1200 rpm. So the speed of this wheel A is given 1200 rpm, speed of A. And the direction is not specified whenever the speed of rotation, the direction is not given. We can assume it to be rotating in a clockwise manner, which is treated as positive. So clockwise sense. Find the speed of wheel E. So we have to calculate how much is the speed of this wheel E or the annular wheel E. And F is the arm. So this F is the arm, which is connecting B and D. Here we have an arm. So the question is to find the number or we can say the speed of wheel E and also its sense of rotation that is either it is rotating in a clockwise or in anti-clockwise manner. Now when we look at this question and the diagram which is given, we have gears A, B, C, D and E and out of them the number of teeth is given for the four gears. It means the number of teeth for gear B is an unknown. It is not given. So first I would be going for the calculation of number of teeth on gear B. So for that I will use the concept of geometry. So this is the annular wheel, annular wheel C, then here we have gear B and this is gear A. And now from this simple geometry we can easily say that the radius for annular or the outer wheel C from here up till this center, this radius is made up of the radius of A from here up till here, then the diameter of B. So it contains radius of A and the diameter of B. So like we can say this is one of the views that is either it can be front view or side view and this is the other view for this same epicyclic gear train shown here. So by using the geometry concept, By using the geometry of the figure alongside, I can say that radius of C is equal to radius of A plus the diameter of B
radius of c can be written as the diameter of c by 2 similarly for a now at the same time we can say that since these gears they would be mesh in mesh if they are module is same so module is given by the pitch circle diameter upon the number of teeth and therefore diameter is module into number of teeth so i would be replacing all the diameters with module into number of teeth for wheel c wheel a and wheel b and since for the gears to be in mesh the module remains same so module would be cancelled and therefore we are left with so from this equation tc is given it is 100 ta is 14 So the number of teeth on wheel B or gear B comes out to be 43 and now once the number of teeth on all the wheels are known we can easily go for the remaining part that is here we have to find in this question the speed of wheel E for that I would be using the tabular method I will explain that. And in the tabular method, I'll draw the table. Now the columns in the tabular method are, first column is for the number of steps. Next is for the operations. After that, since here it is given in this gear train that F is the arm. So we have to start with the arm and keeping the arm as fixed. So the into the column where I am writing the speed of the elements. So for that speed first would be arm F. Then here it is given that driving wheel is A. So after arm going into the driving wheel A that is gear A. A is in mesh with B as we can see here. So after A gear B. At the same time we can see that B and D they are onto the same shaft it means they are called as compound gears they are compounded so the speed whatever the speed of gear B is there D will also have the same speed so they are for compound wheel we can write down it is for B and D same speed next B is in mesh with C so gear C and D is in mesh with E at last. Gear E. So these are the columns. Then starting with the first step in the operations part. Fix the arm that is the step we have to follow keeping the arm as fixed so its speed is 0 and giving plus 1 revolution to gear A plus 1 means in the clockwise sense. Now I have to find the speed of the respective gears so starting with gear B I will explain the method and I am going to use the concept of velocity ratio. Now 
when we see gear a and b they are external gears a is the driving gear b is the driven gear so the velocity ratio is written as speed of driven that is b upon speed of driver that is a is in inverse proportion for the of the number of teeth so in front of speed of b i am going to have number of teeth for a and similarly in the denominator number of teeth for b into the diagram it is clearly given that here they are external gears so if a rotates in a clockwise manner b would be rotating anti clockwise and since the direction of rotation is opposite so into the velocity ratio i have to introduce a negative sign here for speed of gear b because the direction of rotation is opposite to that of a so therefore nb is equal to minus na ta upon tb and therefore in the table in the first operation we have said that giving plus 1 revolution to a so that becomes 1 and therefore speed of gear b is minus ta by tb so into the table for gear b minus ta by tb and that will be the same speed for the gear d as well now b is driving the annular wheel c because they are in mesh so b becomes the driving gear c is the driven gear so the velocity ratio between b and c driven gear that is speed of driven nc upon speed of driving gear which is nb is equal to and now when we see here b and c they are connected in such a way like b it is a gear and c is an internal gear so whenever we have the connection in such a way then we can say that the direction of rotation is same i'll explain it over here with this diagram that if a is rotating in a clockwise manner b is rotating in an anti clockwise sense then even c would be rotating in an anti clockwise sense because of it being an annular wheel also called as the internal gear so the direction of rotation of b and c they are same so that is why in the velocity ratio there will be positive sign no negative sign and the formula is tb upon tc remember negative sign is to be introduced when we have the opposite nature of rotation in case of external gears as we have seen but if there is internal gear the direction of rotation is same so it has to be positive so therefore nc would be and nb is here which is minus ta by tb into tb by tc so tb and tb gets cancelled and what remains here is minus ta by tc so into the next column of the table for speed of gear c minus ta by tc then for gear e or we can say annular e e is being driven with the help of gear d so d becomes the driver and e is the driven so similarly i can say that speed of driven which is e upon speed of driver which is d is equal to number of teeth for d upon number of teeth for e and again here there is positive sign because d and e are also connected in such a way that when d rotates in a direction like for example when d would be rotating in an anti clockwise manner it would be rotating e as well in an in an anti clockwise manner that is the direction of rotation is same for d and e so therefore the velocity ratio is positive and therefore nd would be multiplied next speed of d is same as the speed of b because they are compounded they are compound wheel onto the same shaft so nb is equal to nd 
बिकॉज ऑफ देयर कंपाउंड अरेंजमेंट ऑन टू द सेम शाफ्ट सो वट एवर इज द स्पीड ऑफ डी सेम इज ऑफ बी सो आई राइट डाउन माइनस टी ए बाई टी बी स्पीड ऑफ बी इन टू टी डी बाई टी ई सो दिस इज द वेलॉसिटी और द स्पीड फॉर गियर ई राइटिंग दिस इन टू द टेबल इन द लास्ट कॉलम फॉर ई माइनस टी ए बाई टी बी इन टू टी डी बाई टी ई सो यर आफ्टर गेटिंग द स्पीड द नेक्स्ट स्टेप वुड बी मल्टीप्लाइंग बाय स्मॉल एम दैट इज द रेवल्यूशन थ्रू आउट सो देर फॉर इफ एम गेट्स मल्टीप्लाइड विथ जीरो दैट इज जीरो एम इन टू वन दैट इज प्लस एम माइनस एम टी ए बाई टी बी माइनस एम टी ए बाई टी सी माइनस एम टी ए बाई टी डी अपॉन टी बी बाई टी ई नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज एड प्लस एन रेवल्यूशंस टू ऑल एलिमेंट्स सो वेन एन गेट्स एडेड एन प्लस जीरो इज एन then here we have m plus n plus n and so these are the total motions for the respective elements total motion for arm f is n for gear a m plus n so these are the total motions for the respective gears for arm f this is the speed of the arm f then for gear a speed of a for b and d nb is equal to nd for c and at last for e after getting the respective speeds i look into the problem into the question what is given and what we have to find out we have to find the speed of wheel e which is the question and for that i am going to use the condition it is given driving wheel a has 14 teeth and fixed annular c annular c is fixed so therefore since the annular c is fixed which is given so therefore speed of c is equal to 0 and from the table the speed of c is over here i'll write this formula minus m ta upon tc plus small n is equal to 0 therefore minus m ta is given ta is 14 tc is 100 plus n is equal to 0 so therefore minus 0.14 m plus n is equal to 0 that will be equation first next it is also given in the problem that wheel a rotates at 1200 rpm and that i am assuming it to be clockwise so since speed at 1200 rpm clockwise it is given so therefore wheel a is having speed 1200 and from the table the speed of gear a is m plus n into the total motion so therefore m plus n is equal to 
so that's the second equation now therefore solving equations 1 and 2 simultaneously because we have two equations and two unknown that is m plus n so when i solve them simultaneously i am going to get the value of m and n my answers are So M is 1052.63 RPM and N 147.37 RPM. Once these values are known, I can easily calculate the speed of gear E by looking at its total motion. So using this formula. Speed of gear E. Hence putting all values here. TA is 14. TD 40. TB we had calculated it is 43. And TE is 96. Plus small n which is 147.37. So on calculating this, I am getting the answer as 4.57 RPM and the answer is positive. It means E is rotating in a clockwise manner because for us, the clockwise rotation is considered as positive in case of epicyclic gear train. So when we look into the problem, they had said to calculate the speed of wheel E. And here I have found out the speed of wheel E, which came out to be 4.57 RPM in a clockwise sense. So when this has been answered, the problem gets completed. That was regarding the epicyclic gear train. At the end, if you'll find my videos helpful, you all can like, share, comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks for watching.